Hey everyone, welcome back to Dev Parkour. This video is actually in response to a question posed by one of you on, uh, on, a, on a previous video. Uh, I think it was the video where I talked about uh, continuous deployment. Uh, I'll leave a link to that video in the, in the description here. Um, and it was basically, why can't we just do a git pull on our production web servers? Totally valid question. And uh, it's something that I did in production for several years. And there actually may be a few, um, a few probably websites, maybe smaller web apps, uh, kind of in their infancy that don't really have true full uh, continuous deployment pipelines where I still do the same thing. Um, and the, 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 the basic rationale behind why I do it and why I still do it is, uh, you know, if I'm not sure that a particular project is worth all that investment, I might just do something super quick just to get it stood up, get, get it, get some eyes on it and, and get some feedback on it. But once that happens, realistically, I should either kill the application because nobody cared, uh, you know, it was, it was a, not a, a great idea or, you know, it's not quite there yet. Or I should focus on actually doing a true continuous deployment pipeline. Uh, and the reason is because, and e even short term, I mean, the, the, this, this concern is still present even when you, when you have it uh, stood up this way short term, uh, but the, the window is a lot smaller. Basically, this, it's, an, it's an exfiltration risk. Uh, so it's not so much an issue of, uh, you know, people necessarily being able to get in your network, though, depending on the credentials that you're using, you know, maybe those credentials are something that they, that uh, if your web server were to get compromised, an attacker might be able to get access to more aspects of your Git infrastructure than you'd intended. But let's just assume that you're using a token or a, uh, an SSH key that's specific to that repository, just just for sake of argument. Even still, now you're talking about uh, giving an attacker access to that Git repository, even read uh, access to that Git repository. Now they have access potentially to the entire history. And hopefully you don't have anything sensitive in, in the Git history, um, but you know they do have access to that. If you're doing something more than just uh, pulling the Git repository, and you know that's it, that's that's the deployment process. You know, let's say there's there's actually a build process or something like that. Now you have uh, potentially given uh, an attacker access to the the source code of your application, and not just the you know the the end product, the binaries. So realistically, it provides a way for an attacker to gain access to your system, or should they gain access to your system, it provides a way for them to pull information from you know, a more, more sensitive area of your overall infrastructure. And that's generally bad. So that's, that's the general uh, pattern that we try to avoid. Rather than allowing uh, more external systems, uh, systems closer to the edge of your infrastructure, to pull information from systems that are more internal, more sensitive, ideally more secure, that sort of thing. We want to be pushing information, pushing specific information from more internal to more external. Uh, so in this case, it would be from your repository and your build system, you would push just what you want to put on the web server, you know, only the build products, um, only the configuration for that specific environment, that sort of thing. You'd only be pushing that specific data, that's those files, uh, that content to your web server, which is inherently kind of in the, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's on the front lines, it's in the battle zone. Um, you don't want to unnecessarily expose yourself to all of those extra, uh, extra factors. Um, so that's the main reason why uh, doing a git pull in production is, uh, is not necessarily a good idea. Uh, there are other reasons, um, you know, git pull itself is kind of a, um, it's kind of a complex operation. 
uh, and, and unless you have really good tooling around it, you could run into a situation where that just fails. Um, so if, you've, if you're doing it manually, like in the cases where I, I'm doing it just to quickly stand up an application in, in production uh, to get external feedback on it, um, I'm doing it manually. I git pull, uh, you know, if it fails for one reason or another, you know, loses connectivity or, um, you know, maybe I made a change in production that's incompatible with the, the changes uh, that I'm pulling, which changing in production, also bad. Uh, but one way or another, you know, I, I am there, I am watching it, I can fix it if, if it breaks. Whereas uh, in, in the push strategy, if you upload a file, and then what I typically do is I upload a, a directory of the new stuff and then change a, a symbolic link from the, the old current to the new current. Um, so that's a very atomic operation. It will either succeed or fail. Uh, one way or another, I will still be in a stable state. And if it fails, it'll very clearly trigger a failure on whatever I'm using for my continuous deployment tooling. And I will know that that deployment failed and I can, I can retry it. Uh, so anything along those lines is very simple, discrete, operations that will fail more or less independently of, of, of other things and, and very clearly. Uh, it's not something that'll uh, succeed partially uh, and either pass the CI CD pipeline or fail a CI CD pipeline and leave the deployment in a, in a, in a, in a, a partially configured state. Uh, that's what we want to try to avoid. We want to, we want to make sure that the deployment either uh, or at least as far as external viewers can tell, they're either looking at the old version of the app or the new version of the app, not some broken in-between state. Uh, so very clearly, uh, you know, either get there or if it has, if, if it only partially succeeds, it still doesn't change the fact that external users are still seeing the old version of the app. So they will never see the new, they will never get switched over to the new version of the app unless the deployment fully succeeds. Um, so in my mind, two really good reasons not to uh, use, just use git pull on your, on your production server. One, the data exfiltration issue, um, which is a huge deal right now. Uh, so uh, if, if your organization is still using git pull in production, I, the first conversation I'd have is it's a data exfiltration risk. Uh, we really need to be uh, security forward, security first. Um, let's let's rethink how we're doing this because this 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 is bad. This could be bad for us. Uh, this is this is a serious risk. And then secondly, um, you know there is some technical risk involved. Git pull might leave you in kind of a weird state, uh, whereas something that's a little simpler, straightforward, uh, and has clearer failure criteria. Uh, will ultimately serve you better in the long run. Um, you know, especially if you scale, but even at small scale, you know, even I'm the sole developer on a lot of the projects that I have true CICD pipelines around. Um, and I really like it because I, I, I don't necessarily have the time to go debugging, you know, a, a partial deploy. I either want it to succeed or fail and that's it. Uh, so hopefully you found this video interesting. If you did go ahead and hit that like button, Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I uh, release a new video. Um, and if you have any further comments or questions about continuous deployment or particularly this strategy and why you should or should not do it, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section below. I really appreciate that. I love responding to, to your comments and questions. Um, it's great to have a community around, around this channel. So. I'm excited to hear uh, what you have to say. Uh, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.